Got another question for the Synoptic Questions playlist. So we're up to number 17 now. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So the formula of the orange-brown precipitate A. So if we think about what's happened, we've started with the FeH2062+. So ions in its 2 plus oxidation state, pale green colour. So it's been reacted with chlorine and we've got an orange-brown solution. So it's actually been oxidised up to iron 3. So this orange-brown colour is associated with iron 3. So when you react this orange-brown solution, which is just going to be FeH2063+, plus, with sodium hydroxide, we're going to get FeOH3 times iron 3 hydroxide. So you could either write it like that, or you could give its full formula and write that. Moving on to this black precipitate B with the molar mass 247.9. So that's been formed from the reaction between hydrogen sulfide and silver nitrate solution. So if we think about the ions at play, so as soon as the hydrogen sulfide hits the water of the aqueous solution, we're going to generate H plus ions and S2 minus ions. So we're just thinking about how ions can combine to give this MR. So it's a bit of trial and error, really. The obvious thing to go for would be something like AG2S. So we've got two silver 1 plus ions reacting or combining with S2 minus. And then if you just do a quick check, so two silvers is 2 times 107.9, 32.1 for your sulfur. If you add them together, it actually does give that 247.9. So we've hit lucky first time, AG2S. Moving on to the next part, so is this a redox reaction? Student thinks it is, so we've got to say with reasons if the student's correct. So if we think about oxidation numbers first, so there's all the oxidation numbers of all the species present, and hopefully you can see that nothing has changed. So the iron starts out at plus 2, it finishes at plus 2. Sulfur starts at minus 2, stays at minus 2. Likewise for hydrogen, plus 1 to plus 1. Oxygen minus 2 to minus 2. So the student is not correct, and we're just going to give a couple of examples of why. Okay, so moving on to the next part, we've got to write the equation for the reaction of this pale green FeH2062 plus with chlorine. Well, we're told that we get this orange brown solution, and that's an indication that the ion's been oxidized from plus 2 oxidation state up to plus 3. So it's turning into that FeH2063 plus. So if there's an oxidation process, there needs to be a reduction process. So the chlorine's obviously reduced. And the only thing it can be reduced to is Cl minus. So we'll start balancing this now. So obviously we're going to need two Cl minuses to balance the two Cl atoms on the left-hand side. Now we've got to be careful here because the equation looks balanced, but it's not actually balanced because the charges don't balance. So on the left-hand side, we've got an overall charge of 2 plus, but on the right-hand side, we've got an overall charge of 1 plus because we've got that's 3 plus here and 2 minus. So that combined charge there goes to 1 plus. So we're not balanced yet. So the way we sort that is we put 2s in front of the ion species. So 4 plus charge on the left. On the right now, 2 times 3 plus is 6 plus, but when you factor in the 2 minus, it drops down to 4 plus. So that is the answer. So moving on to the next part of the question, so we've got to construct this equation for the reaction between hydrogen sulfide and this acidified MnO4 minus ion. Now, in my opinion, the easiest way to tackle this is to think about the two half equations taking place and then combine them so that the electrons disappear. So we'll start with the hydrogen sulfide half equation. So we're told we get this yellow solid. Well, that's elemental sulfur. So what else do we need? Well, we've got two H's on the left, so we'll balance that on the right with two H pluses. So all the atoms are balanced now, we just need to sort the charge out. So we've got no charge on the left-hand side, but we've got two plus at the moment. So we just need to add two electrons on the right-hand side, and that'll bring us down to zero on the right. 
Moving on to the MnO4 minus half equation, so we're told that it goes to this colourless solution containing Mn2 plus ions. Sort the oxygens out, so we'll put four H2Os on the right. Obviously that's introduced hydrogen, so we'll bring the H pluses in now, so we need eight H pluses on the left. So that's all the atoms sorted, so we just need to sort out the charge. So overall on the left we've got seven plus, one minus and eight plus and on the right we've got 2 plus. So we need to bring that 7 plus on the left down to 2 plus and we do that by adding 5 electrons. So to get the equation now we're just going to combine these two half equations but remember we want the electrons to cancel so we need to get them both up to 10. So we're going to multiply the hydrogen sulphide half equation by 5 we're going to multiply the MnO4 minus 1 by 2. So I'm just going to add these together now which gives us that there, and we just need to sort out the H pluses because we've got H plus ions on both sides, so obviously these 10 H pluses will disappear, and this 16 will go down to 6, which means the final equation looks like that. So moving on to part B now, we've got to determine the formulae of C through to G, uh, show all our work in, and equations for any reactions that have taken place. So before I'm even thinking about anything, I'm looking at these atoms here and I'm thinking nitrate because we've got nitrogens and oxygens in there. So we'll start with stage one. The students gently heated that many moles of C, removes the water of crystallisation and makes that many grams of water, leaves that many moles of anhydrous compound D. So you can see I've turned that into a kind of equation there. So you can see that from the mass of H2O, we can work out how many moles that is. So that's coming out at 0.027 moles of H2O, so the ratio between D and H2O is 1 to 9, so just divide that by that. So if you take the 18 hydrogens and 9 oxygens that would be present from 9 waters from this, you get that there, and my hunch that it was a nitrate looks right because if it's NO3 three times, we get N3O9. So we've identified C and D, that's the anhydrous product. There's the equation for that reaction. So moving on to stage two now, you can see I've done a similar thing, summarising that information in a kind of equation. So we've got that many moles of D, heated strongly, makes this oxide of E, so it's going to be some form of iron oxide. It's got the MR of 159.6, and we get this gaseous mixture with that volume at RTP. So I'm just going to focus on the formula of oxide E for now. So we're just playing around with the MRs till we get this 159.6. And the answer for E comes out to be Fe2O3, iron 3 oxide. I'm going to worry about the equation, obviously, once I know what these two gases are. So we'll use stage 3 to get that. So there's my summary for stage three. So they've taken this mixture of gases F and G, remember 270 cm cubed at RTP, cooled it down, and we're told we'll get that many grams of F and that many cm cubed at RTP of G. We're also told that G really likes a glowing splint, and that's telling us straight away that G must be oxygen. Next thing we're gonna do is work out how many moles we've got in this mixture. How many moles of G we've got, or oxygen we've got, because we've got both the volumes at RTP, and obviously the difference is going to be the moles of F. And you'll notice we've got the mass of F, so if we work out how many moles we've got, we can work out its MR and hence its identity. So all I'm doing is dividing by the molar gas volume, but using the centimetres cubed value, 24,000. So we're starting off with that many moles of the combined gases. We've got that many moles of G produced, so the difference between those two numbers is how many moles of F must have been present, which comes out at 0 0.009 moles. So mass over moles gives an MR for F of 46. So we've now got to work out what it is. So if you think about how it was generated, it was from the heating of the iron 3 nitrate, that anhydrous iron 3 nitrate. Well, an obvious thing to go for is a combination of nitrogen and oxygen. So the combination of nitrogen and oxygen to get 46 is NO2. So we've established the identity of F.
So we're now in a position to write the equation for the heating of the iron 3 nitrate. So we know the identities of everything now. Sensible first thing to do is to put a 2 in front of the iron 3 nitrate. That's given us a total of 6 nitrogens. So we'll put a 6 in front of that. So we've got 18 oxygens in total on the left. And from these two, we've got 15 oxygens. So we need another 3 from the O2. So it's 3 over 2 in front of the O2. Obviously, you could put 1.5 or 1.5.